Next, we want to focus on some graphical representations of our data. For categorical data, remember data that is fitting into categories, can be displayed using the following graphical representations. You can make a pie chart for categorical data. You can also make a bar chart for categorical data. The summer packet does not cover either of these graphs, so if you need a refresher, I suggest you check out Khan Academy or do a Google, Google search or YouTube video, and I'm sure you can find something on how to make pie charts and bar charts. Um, in the meantime, we will be focusing on quantitative data and the graphs that we use to represent this type of data. We'll be looking at four different graphs. We're going to be looking at dot plots. We're going to be looking at box and whisker plots. also known as box plots. We're going to look at stem and leaf plots. Also known as stem plots. Um, the last one we're going to focus on is called a histogram. You may be familiar with box and whisker plots as well as stem and leaf plots, um, but I do want you to make sure that you follow my guidelines since they are slightly different for um, AP expectations. Um, so let's start with the dot plot. We've got a set of data here for student GPAs. Um, the first thing we want to do is we want to draw and label a number line so that all the values in your data set are going to fit. So you can see here that we have 24 data points and it's probably easiest in this case to use our calculator to help us sort our data. So in order to do that, we go to stat. So we find the stat key, we go to number one, edit, and we enter in all of these data points. So notice I've done that already. I want to put these in least to greatest to make my life a little bit easier. So to do that, I go back to stat, and option number two says sort A. That means that they're going to sort the data in ascending order, which means from least to greatest. So I'm going to select number two, and then next I need to tell the calculator which list I want to sort. All my data is in L1, so I want to sort L1. When I go back to the list, notice now that they are all in order. So I can see the smallest value in this data set is 21, and the largest data in this data set is four. So that means my number line for my dot plot has to go from 2.1, or let's go from two to four. And we're gonna pretend that my line was straight. So I'm gonna go by increments of 0.2. So two, 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, 2.8, 3, 4, 5, 3.2, 3.4, 3.6, 3.84. And I want to make sure I give my dot plot um, a label. I want to show that this x-axis represents GPA. So basically using my calculator, since it's nice and ordered, um, we're just making a dot above each value that appears. So the first value that appears in the table is 2.1, so here's 2.2. 2.1 is between, so I'm going to place a dot. Next I have a 2.2. There are one, two, three, four, two point fours, a two point six, another two point six, two point seven, and a two point nine. And Sophia Cardona, please come to the main office. And a two point nine. Next we have a three point two, a three point four, two more three point fours, three point six. 3.7, 3.8, two 3.9s, and two 4s. And this is a dot plot. So dot plots are a quick reference and it shows you how spread out the data is. You can see that scores vary from 2 to 4. They aren't really clustered around anywhere in particular. And that concludes how we make a dot plot.